In my travels, I've gone out of my way to visit haunted locations. I've rented a room at the Haunted Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. I've traveled to Salem, MA, and toured all the haunted spots. I've been to castles in Germany, as well as concentration camp Dachau. I've gone to the Whaley House in San Diego. I've done midnight lantern tours of the Winchester House and haunted Gettysburg. Visited every supposed haunted location in every country I've visited, as well as around the States. I mention this because, although I did have a feeling at the Whaley House in San Diego, California, most of the locations were just a tourist spot for me, mostly. I've had experiences in other places that I was not expecting. For example, a church in Dublin. This may sound weird, but it's at the times I wasn't expecting something to happen that it did. My experience at the church in Dublin was I kept hearing like a dull noise behind me. I was inside with my camcorder. This was back in the early 2000s. I kept feeling like my stomach was turning and like very depressed. Once I left the church, I felt normal after I ate and drank a beer. When I got back home, I played my videotape to my friends to show them my trip. I started to tell them about my experience. My friend said, hey, turn up the volume. You could hear crying in the background, but not like one person, but many. The odd thing about that video cassette is for some explained reason, it later went missing. I live alone, so no one took it from me. Just till this day, I never found it again. Another experience was in Niagara Falls. Later in life, when I met my bride, we went to Niagara Falls for our honeymoon. Our hotel room was haunted, and once again, I felt something at Old Fort Niagara. My wife was after a while begging to leave the place. Another thing happened to me once when I was traveling for business. I was staying in some small town north of Seattle. I don't remember the name of the hotel, but at night, someone knocked on my door. I just happened to be awakened on my laptop, so I jumped and looked through the peephole, and no one was there. I opened my door, and no one down either side of the hallway. No, con no one could have been that fast, as I was in the middle of the hall, but still, no one was there. So a couple weeks ago, our elderly neighbour died. She lived alone and has always been very nice to us. She was in her 90s. We are a younger family, so it was always nice to know she was next door, especially since we both worked during the day. She would keep an eye on the street. Whenever I was in my backyard, I would look over and always see her lights on and could hear her TV. She used to have the volume up kind of loud. It just got to be one of those things that you always expected. The past few evenings, either taking out trash or watering plants, I look over to a dark house now, no TV and no lights on. Since she is my only neighbour on that side, it's sad and lonely now. Last week, we were doing chores, mostly so we could have the weekend chore free. I was up a little later than usual, 9pm, yeah I know, we are party animals. So I'd gathered up some trash and was going to take it out to the side of the house where our bins are, the same side as my neighbour. As I'm putting the trash in the bin, I hear, hey, it was her voice. I froze and looked up to the dark empty house. Nothing, and no one is there. Now one thing you have to understand is that when she was in her backyard, she would say, hey, how are you doing? Or just give me a hey, that she was there. Anyway, I opened my gate to see if there was someone out front. The street was empty, and the sound came from her backyard, so I looked around for a bit. I got chills up my back, so I went inside. I hope she's still checking up on us from above. A few days ago, my wife complained to me that she heard someone in our backyard moving one of our patio chairs. It's odd we have a ring spotlight camera out back and it didn't pick up anything but she said she heard one of our chairs being moved. I told her she must have imagined it. I looked out back, didn't see our side gates open. It wasn't windy, and even on what we would call windy days, our patio furniture is too heavy to move on its own. Other than a stray cat, we don't have any large animals that could jump our fence. Last night at about 1am, 
I woke up because I heard someone moving our patio chair and bump it to the table. Literally, I jumped from my bed and looked out the window. Nothing. Both gates closed, our ring camera didn't pick up anything, but on my shed I have a motion light and it was on. No one could have been that quick to jump a fence from the time I heard it till I looked out the window. It wasn't windy last night, but like I've said, our backyard doesn't get high winds or anything. And we never had wind move our furniture. Over the weekend, something happened in my house that reminded me of a weird thing my mother used to do before bedtime. She always made sure all closet doors were closed, and even if I remember correct, all cupboards too. Anything aside from the actual bedroom door had to be closed, even the bathroom door. If she ever woke up and found the closet door open, like if one of us kids went in there, she would kind of freak out. Although she never specifically said it, I always knew it was because of spirits or of ghosts or something like that. Growing up, I also had a friend whose mom did not allow mirrors in the bedroom. Even my friend had to cover up hers when she bought a handheld mirror to her bedroom. Just wondering if anyone else has had things like this in their family. By the way, the thing I experienced that made me remember this was Sunday night about 3am. I heard a loud bang from my closet sliding door. I'm sure it was the house settling, but dang, it made me jump out of bed. Suddenly, I remembered my mom always closing the closet doors before bed. When I was in high school, back in the early 1990s, I used to do many odd jobs. I never worked at McDonald's or Taco Bell like my friends, but instead, I worked off and on at an auto mechanic shop. I worked for a flooring contractor as a laborer. I actually worked several construction and demolition jobs as well as scalping concert tickets. I used to make a lot of money doing this stuff and always liked working with my hands. When I worked for a contractor, we once did a demolition job at a mortuary and we worked from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., so we were out of there during business hours. We also did some restaurants, bars, and stores, usually working overnight since we couldn't be there during business hours. This worked perfect for me, and I would work sometimes over the weekend or one or two nights in a row. Like I said, I made a lot of money doing that kind of stuff, way more than my friends did at fast food places working after school every day. One time, however, I was dropped off at an empty house. This was unusual because it was a Saturday morning job, which I didn't care because this meant the night was mine free. It was also unusual because it was a house. We mainly did commercial stuff for the contractor. So just for clarification, I worked under the table for almost all my jobs that I did back then. I was underage, but was as skilled as any adult, even more so than a few of the other workers. This one Saturday, I was dropped off at an empty house. My job was to tear out all the flooring, cabinets, tiles, sinks, toilets, well, everything except drywall and doors. I grew up in a somewhat remote town and this house was even more remote, just tumbleweeds outside and the house, if I remember, had a 1960s country look to it. So I go inside and the idea was just to gut the house and pull everything else in the driveway to be hauled away later. I brought my ice chest with drinks and lunch the job should only have taken me about the day. I knew they'd be back for me about 4 to 6 p.m. I remember getting started in the kitchen and I remember being upset that there was no electricity on because my radio's battery was almost dead. This is where things start getting fuzzy. I remember looking around at the house and making a mental note of everything I needed to tear out. I remember feeling like, well, a bad feeling in the house. It was older, not like it had been abandoned for a long time, but like maybe someone old lived in there for decades and never updated anything. I started to have weird feelings that soon led to complete lack of any power. Like literally, I felt like I had no energy. I ended up in a back room with the radio playing in the kitchen. And the next thing I knew, it was evening. I felt like I startled myself to wake up. I remember feeling like, where the hell am I? I got up and it was silent. No noise, no light. I stumble outside and look around and was shocked to see that hours passed nearly the entire day. 
I went back in and started gathering my stuff and just locked up and waited outside for my ride to get me. I kind of got yelled at, but since I got paid for what I did and not time, it wasn't a huge deal, but I did refuse to go back out there and two guys I went out the following week and emptied the house out. Just so I know it's going to ask, no, I didn't use any drugs or alcohol. I've actually always been very anti-drug. Seeing my older brother spiral down with his life at an early age made me against all drugs. I wasn't sick and there was no gas or propane on at the house, so no fumes caused it. Also, like I said before, I didn't work every day and when I was young, I had tons of energy that I could have demoed that entire house by lunch. The house just took all my energy and knocked me out. I wouldn't have normally slept like that in a dirty job site, especially one that gives me the creeps inside. About four years ago, my office moved to a larger facility. Just prior to us acquiring the site, we heard from employees of a business next to our site that an attempted murder took place in our alleyway. It's not known for being a bad neighborhood, but I think someone just saw an empty building and tried to kidnap and murder a female. That really doesn't have anything to do with what has been going on, but just adds to the kind of creepy vibe a lot of us feel. The entire inside of the building is automated. Every time you enter a section, office, bathroom, warehouse or storage area, or room, the lights automatically come on. Only a person walking can set off the lights. For everything else, you need an electronic fob. My office is upstairs and I have access to all the video monitoring for the entire office and surrounding parking lot. So I keep an eye on everything. Not spying on employees, but just making sure someone is up front when packages arrive, seeing who accesses our parking lots, who enters the gates, etc. In the past few years, we've had some unexplained occurrences happen. One Saturday evening, I get a call from our alarm company that our rear door was triggered and there was motion in our warehouse. I immediately pull up the camera system on my phone and sure enough, the door is open. I don't see any employees there. I was thinking someone ran in and went straight to the restroom and forgot to turn off the alarm. I didn't see anyone and no employee of vehicles in our lots. I told them to go ahead and dispatch police. I got up and went to the office. On the way, the police called me to say they found the doors closed and no sign of foul play, so they took off from the scene. I get to the office after the police leave and have a look around. Nothing is tampered with like the door, door handles or locks. The strange thing is, the door is only opened with a key card. The system tells me if, say, employee number 11 opened the door and at what time. I looked up our system and nothing. I checked the security footage and sure enough, the door opens and the light outside seems to get brighter, almost like something is shining on the doorway. Then after about 10 minutes, the door slams shut. I see the police arrive and then leave and then I arrive. At first I attributed it to a faulty electronic door latch. So I contacted our security company that installed our systems and told them that the door opened by itself and that if they can come and see if there was some kind of fault in the system or if the latch wasn't catching. Their report was that the latch was working fine and if the door had not properly latched, we would have been aware of it as it would have showed us open in the alarm system and we would have had to purposely bypass that door to set the alarm. There were no power failures, but in the event of power failure, the system goes on lockdown. The weird thing about it is, the door has an automatic closer, so there's probably about four or more pounds of pressure trying to close the door. Also, the door alarm sensor tripped and the motion about 12 feet away from the door tripped too. Next, I wasn't there when this happened, but another employee reported that she heard a noise coming from the restroom and walked in to find the sink faucet was turned on. Strange, but not altogether proof of something going on. Maybe someone forgot to turn the sink off and no one heard it for a while. More than one person has reported noises and movement. One time one of our warehouse guys was working late and stayed late at the office because he wanted to let traffic die down a bit before going home. I confirmed this by watching the camera footage the following day. What he told me next that happened, I found very odd. He said that he left the office but went to sit in his car. 
He said he pulled up a video that he was watching and laid back in his car, which was parked in front of our office on the streets. He said he wasn't asleep, but watching his phone just sitting in the car with it running. He said he heard a noise from the die of the car, like if someone lightly knocked on his door. He thought another employee had showed up or something, so he turned around and started to roll down the window. He said he saw a shadow of a person walking off, and it didn't look normal as it wasn't that dark out, but he couldn't see anything but a shadow going away. He freaked out and put his car into drive and sped away. When I check the camera footage, I see him doing everything like he said, and then I see him almost peel out after some movement in his car. Other times, people report seeing something out of the corner of their eye, sometimes like if someone walked by but nothing is there. Another time they actually looked for someone who they thought entered our warehouse and found nothing. We've had several false alarms with movement in the warehouse and lobby, but probably the most further apart you can get in our facility. I have personally worked really late and have been the only one inside the building in the late night hours. Since everything turns off, there, there is no motion in my office. It's the only section illuminated and surrounded by darkness. I swear I hear things I don't normally hear. Things like movement, walking, doors opening. Some I can trace like our ice maker in the office fridge dropping newly made ice. Other sounds comes from the AC system that sounds like people are talking downstairs. This past Saturday evening, I had to run to my office to grab something. It was well past 8pm and dark outside. As I pull up to my building, I notice some lights on in the office. Now the only way lights will come on is if someone triggered them to come on by walking in that area. The lights in the centre of the building were on. There's a 20 minute period of lights on after a section is tripped. So whoever was in the office was within the last 20 minutes. Thinking it might be the office cleaners, I open the door and say loudly, Hello, anyone here? Knowing that no one was because the parking lot was empty, but you never know. I thought it was so strange that only the center lights in the building were on. If you walked to that section, you would have tripped other sensors in the hallway and entryway, or backstation lights to the warehouse lights, but all of those were off, including all the upstairs lights. I still can't figure out how those lights were tripped. Our security system doesn't save video for extended periods of time. If a certain camera like a door camera gets high volume of use, the playback doesn't last more than about a week or two. I wish I'd saved some of the videos like the door opening and shutting. Yesterday, I was home alone. I took the day off of work to do a bunch of chores around the house. One of the things I had to do was turn in our old cable equipment and DSL router and get new equipment and install it. My house was built in the early 1950s. There is the upstairs part. We have a downstairs part that's a new addition, built sometime in the early 2000s. I only mention this so you can understand the upstairs of the house's raised foundation with wooden floors throughout. The new addition is downstairs on concrete foundation. Upstairs, you can hear footsteps of someone walking around with shoes on, with shoes off downstairs, it's a little harder to hear because there's carpeting and it's on concrete. So if someone was running across the house on the upstairs older part of the house, it's loud and echoey. Yesterday I was home alone. It was early in the afternoon. I was downstairs installing the new DSL router on the very far corner of the downstairs part of the house. As I was laying on the floor trying to locate the cables and put them in the right places, I heard a loud running across coming from the upstairs older part of the house. It isn't possible that someone came in and left because all the doors and windows have sensors that make a chime when a door or window is open. I did not hear a chime and no one who lived in the house should have been home. My wife was at work and my son was at school. I quickly got up and tried my best to listen to see if there was really someone in the house. I went to the upstairs older part of the house and looked through each bedroom of the kitchen, bathrooms, front door was locked. There's no way that anyone could have entered the house, run through it and left. I don't know what I heard, but it was definitely someone running through the upstairs part of my house.
When I was in my mid-twenties, I had a girlfriend that was 10 years older than me. I lived with her three plus weeks out of the month. When I didn't, I would sleep in the room I shared with my brother at my parents' home. One night, about 3.30 in the morning, I slowly awoke to the warm feeling of a nude woman behind me. She was up against me to the point that I could make out her body type and grooming habits. Her arm was around my waist and was giving off some heat. That is most likely what woke me up. As I was awakening, I made out the fact that I was at my parents' house and my brother was sleeping in the bed across from me. At that point, I was like, who the hell's behind me? I actually waited until I knew I was completely awake, moved my hands and feet a little. Meanwhile, I could feel the hot breath and breathing behind me. I jumped up as fast as I could and threw the blanket off, looked down, and there was no one there. My brother was like, what the fuck? and I was feeling the bed that was still warm to the touch behind where I thought I was sleeping. I was really expecting to find someone. My childhood home is haunted, but mostly steps and opening and closing of doors. My father said he saw a blonde girl in the hall once, but in the 17 years I lived there, this was by far the most intense. So I was 18, almost 19 when this happened, which would have put this back in 2013. My family and I lived in one close unit due to finances, which included me, my parents, my little sister 15, my older sister 23, her husband 25, and their daughters three and two. We also had a dog and about five cats with us at the time. Yeah, I know, it's a lot. Long story short, we were moving down from a part of Northern Florida down to a more of the central area. The new house we were supposed to go to into wasn't quite ready yet. So instead of fighting with a hotel for weeks on end, we decided to rent a house. An owner in the area had been nice enough to rent it to us for pretty cheap for a few weeks, which makes sense later. So right off the bat, the place wasn't terrible. According to the owner, the place had been built in the 1950s, but no one had officially owned it and lived in it since the early 2000s. It had pretty much just been passed to different owners and renters. The neighborhood, not the best. It was an older place and a few of the yards, thankfully not ours, hadn't been tended to, overgrown with weeds and wild plants that could go up a couple of feet up your legs. In Florida, you don't mess with those. Not only can deadly bugs and snakes be hiding in there, but a lot of the plants have the ability to sting you and mess your skin up. Hence why Florida is Discount Australia, as we call it down here. I guess calling someone in to deal with the wild lawns was too much money or too much effort, especially since some of these homes didn't look like they were being lived in. The insanity didn't really start until we first brought the cats inside. Our orange tabby, who was well known for being super chill and not given two shits, acting like he'd lost his mind, yowling and scratching at all the doors like he was trying to get away from something until I opened up a door to a bedroom. As soon as he could, he took a dive under the bed and hissed at anyone who tried to ease him out. It took him nearly a full 24 hours, even going to the bathroom under there before he came out. Note, all tile flooring, so while gross, this at least wasn't an issue to clean up. For the most part, other than that, things went well for the first few days. Rushed, cramped, but good. After about three days, my dad decided to return to a hotel closer to his new workplace, paid for by the company of course, and my mom decided to go with him, leaving the rest of us teens, young adults and toddlers at the house. We were in an older suburb with a, in a pretty busy area and had a couple different cars, so we weren't being abandoned. Long story short, that's when the nightmare started. I can't remember any prior experiences there other than the cat. All of us, including the kids, had horrible nightmares of either being chased or <clears throat> unalived, as it were. I don't remember all of the nightmares everyone mentioned, but I remember mine pretty clearly, of course. I woke up in a dark basement in a place I'd never seen and just knew something was after me. I had to run, knowing whatever it was, was always there and wouldn't give up. I woke up in a cold sweat. This kept happening every other night and nearly a week in, my little sister, brilliant on her part, 
decided to hit up an online friend she'd had for years who lived an hour away to ask if she could stay with them. Especially after the three-year-old started talking about scary lady walking across the house. After said friend's parents came to pick her up, she spent the next two weeks with pizza and cable TV and no ghost. Godspeed, youngling. Real quick, in the house living room, there was this window that overlooked the back garden. It had a whole high area made of brick and ceramic where I suppose you could put plants to get food, good lighting. But it also served as a great place where my sister would let her two little ones stand up and walk around so they could see the back garden and all the wild lizards running around. For context, it was almost big enough for an adult to curl up on, so there was plenty of space. Probably about four feet from the ground, and yes, my sister would monitor her kids while they were playing up there, obviously. But this detail is important later. So anyway, the three-year-old started seeing a scary lady around the house. We'd ask her exactly what she'd seen as we were starting to gather. Not all was right in the land of Oz, but as you'd guess, Three-year-olds aren't great informants. It was just stuff about the scary lady and how she was really mean. Mind you, we'd gathered by this point that the place was haunted. One does not simply wander into Mordor and brush off the horrific bullshit placed before them. The problem was, we couldn't leave. No one else had anywhere to go, especially with that many pets. The hotels weren't animal friendly, and while you can hide one cat, Four extras and a whole ass 50 pound dog are a different story. So then, I had my own encounter with this thing. It was close to maybe two weeks of our three week stay. I'd been laying in bed listening to music so I could stim and calm down. I have ASD and ADHD, so it's a method I use before I can sleep. I was fully awake. I hadn't gone to sleep yet. I hadn't taken any medication. The blinds on my window had stopped working God knows how long ago. So there was plenty of moonlight coming in, illuminating most of the room. I looked down to check my iPod Nano, back when those were a thing, and after putting it back down, looked up to see a shadowy figure standing right near my head to the right, looming over me. I distinctly remember it was 10, 11 p.m. Since, like I said, I'd just checked my iPod and had seen the clock in the upper part of the screen. Let me be perfectly clear, I was not paralyzed. I could move, and I know that because I grabbed the bed sheets, nearly peed myself, and had to actively think about not moving or screaming. My logic at the time was that this thing was uncomfortably close, and if I gave it reason to, it could mess me up. So I stayed there, eyes locked on where this face should have been, staring. There wasn't any big finale, any climax. It faded out of existence in a matter of seconds, leaving me alone and, thankfully, my bed dry. When we were rounding up our last couple of days there, all of us, me, my older sister and my brother-in-law, were eagerly packing up our things ahead of time. We wanted out and fast. So that things could get done in a more timely manner with the things my sister's family had brought, my brother-in-law gathered things up while my sister watched the kids, letting them play up on the earlier mentioned windowsill. Mind you, I didn't see this happen. I only heard about it shortly after. I'd been in the room I'd been staying in, reading one of the books I'd brought with me in my bag. My sister swore by this a couple of times, but after that could never bring herself to talk about this story again, understandably. She'd been watching both of her girls as they looked through the window and out at the garden when the dog started to bark, probably as someone taking a walk. She swears she turned her back for only a moment or two yelling at the dog a few times to quiet down since she couldn't just run over and leave her girls. She turned back just in time to see a two-year-old with a dazed look on her face, the cords from the blinds wrapped around her neck, arms outstretched, walking towards the very edge of the ledge. Naturally, she plucked up my niece, and while she doesn't usually condone spanking in that kind of situation, giving my sister a swat on the thigh was the first thing that came, mind, came to mind. She said her two-year-old, a usually endlessly wild little girl, jolted and gasped as if coming to her senses, sat completely still in her arms, and then burst into tears. She hadn't even reacted when my sister grabbed her. We were done. We peeled out of there real quick. After that, it was worth looking for other options, no matter how stressful it would be. I still live relatively close to this house, probably no more than a 15-minute drive across town. 
Yes, I remember exactly where it is and what it looks like. Yes, I went by there recently to get a peek at the place, to see some other poor sap's car in the driveway. No, I didn't stop the car at Get Out. Fuck that, and fuck that house. This was how I got interested. Found out I was sensitive to a few things, and became an occultist and practitioner in my more recent years. There was lots more to this story, but these were all the huge details, and all I could reasonably cover. So this happened about 19 years ago, when I lived in South China. Now I live in the US. I was around 10 years old, and my best friend had invited me over to his place to hang out. He lived in one of those grey, depressing high-rises you see on TV and in movies. But this high-rise was partially abandoned, and if it wasn't for the four or five tenants still living there, I'm sure they would have demolished it. Most tenants lived on the upper floors, so most levels were dark and abandoned. Due to the poor lighting and lack of windows in the hallway, they were dim even during the day. The only light source was the square opening on the top floor that shined down through the levels. The paint in the hallways were peeling and the air was always damp with a hint of moisture, mould and lead in the air. Makes sense as it seems like they didn't really have anyone doing regular safety inspections and upkeeps. He lived on the second to top floor, so I'd assume around the 20th floor, I don't exactly remember but we either had to take the stairs or an elevator. We mostly took the elevator since the stairs creeped us out, plus it's a lot of climbing. So we get to his apartment and play video games and whatnot. Later in the evening, he asked if I wanted to watch the new Pokemon movie, the one with Lateus and Lateus, I think. I said sure, and he went to get some money from his mom. Since this was early 2000s China, we got our movies from bootleg streetlight stores that sold pirated Western movies. There was one down the street from him, so we went there to buy it. On the way back, it had begun to get dark. We got to the ground floor of the high rise and we decided to take the elevator up. Coincidentally, he mentioned that lately the elevator had been acting up, like it's been making this weird creaking sound, had to press the up button several times to get it to move, and generally acting sluggish. I say coincidentally because the whole fucking elevator shut down halfway up. The lights went out and the elevator came to a halt with a groan. The light bulb inside the elevator went out and the thing just lost power. Now, we were two kids who were stuck in a dark elevator in the middle of the high rise that always creeped me out. We didn't necessarily panic right away, we just started yelling for help. This was before the time of cell phones, so we just hoped some tenant would hear us. That's when we saw it. My buddy suddenly stopped yelling and tapped him on my shoulder to look up. I did. There was a vent with an opening that you could see through, where you could see up the elevator shaft. Since it was late evening, we could partially see up the shaft from what little light shone through the hallways. It was looking down at us from the shaft. It looked like a hybrid between a mandrel and an old lady. Like, the human features were super distinct. It had stripes underneath its eyes, bald head with hairs on the side, sharp teeth, long nose, and very imposing eyes. I drew a picture for y'all's reference below. It was completely silent and just looking down at us, like it was stalking us. There was five seconds of silence where we tried to process what we were seeing, before realizing we had never seen anything like it before. Then we went into complete panic. I think I experienced my first panic attack in that elevator. We started yelling at the top of our lungs, and every time I would look up, it would still be there, looking down. We'd slam our fists on the buttons, kick the door and all, but it was just looking down at us, quietly. I'd try my best to not look at it, hoping it would go away, it was just my imagination. I'd look away for 20 seconds, but curiosity would cause me to look back up at it again. It would still be there. I think we were there for about three or four minutes, and I'll be honest, I soiled myself. Eventually, we heard someone yell something and 30 seconds later, the power came back on. I think the landlord heard us. The elevator started moving again, and once the elevator light came on, the thing was gone. We get back to his apartment, a complete mess, and his mom had to help me change. We eventually cleaned up and she put the movie we just got to calm us down. But I was too terrified to focus. Halfway through the movie, 
My buddy mentioned that he'd hear stuff in the hallways at night, like someone rummaging or scratching, but he never really thought much of it. His parents had mentioned to him not to play in the abandoned floors, but we just assumed since we were kids and those were unsupervised areas. I eventually had his dad walk me down the stairs and take me home. After that day, I refused to go there and would just have him come over to my place. My place didn't have the best toys, but holy shit, it didn't also have a fucking demented mandrel woman hybrid wanting to eat my soul. It happens almost every time, every day, at random times, but only when I'm alone at home. This began mostly being noticeable several months ago. TVs come on in different rooms that I'm in. I have a knee-jerk reaction to look behind me or check doorways constantly over and over again. Because I'm absolutely convinced of the presence of other people around me. I get a static feeling lingering in the air and goosebumps up and down my arms. Sometimes I get tapped or poked. I hear things falling or being moved or opened, for example the kitchen, and even came home to my huge dresser upside down with all three drawers pulled out and their contents emptied. I had a headache and wanted ibuprofen. I was in the middle of a League of Legends grind day. I couldn't find the ibuprofen. I got mad and turned back on my gaming computer and put on my headset. I was hit in the back of the head with an ale Alev bottle. I literally laugh about this one all the time actually. What the actual fuck? Sometimes I would hear something. I've been answered with several things. Four main vocal disturbances in my life have shocked me to my core. My very first one was in my childhood home. I was awoken around 4am as a young girl by hearing the voice of a young boy quietly, innocently go, Hello? Never again I experienced anything quite like that until now, nor spoke about it. The next three are all from the past few months. I saw a large shadow pass over my curtain on my window and I shouted, who are you? And a man's voice, younger but not old, 30s maybe, answered, you can hear me? Then he vanished. I did not reply. I sat in my bedroom speaking to my dogs. I do this a lot. I purchased a new book off Amazon. I was opening the box on my floor. I said, I honestly haven't read in years. I'm very excited for it. A woman, older, gravelly voice, but not croaky, more delicate, whispered, That's great, my name. As I jumped up, extremely frightened, I heard again, No, please, tell me more. The voice came from the hallway. I grabbed my keys and ran out my door and left. I never shook the energy off me the entire day. The last one is the most haunting one. I awoke for only the second time in my 22 years of life to someone awaking me. This time, a male scream. It was lengthy and drawn out. It came and rattled from the gut. It was core breaking. It was extremely loud and physically audible. It did not feel manifested from my mind. It ripped me from the dream I was coherently having and remembering at the time. I had absolutely nothing to do with it either. It was a dream in the universe of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, one of my favourites, I like tunes. The directional sound waves came from underneath me actually, almost as if rising from beneath my pillow, upward, through my body and towards the ceiling. Here are some other things I'm realising. My brand new phone loses full charge in two hours, maybe less. There are suddenly more pests or bugs, mainly flies and gnats. And this has never been an issue before in my four years of living alone in the same place. I'm having bad sleep paralysis at night. I've developed a strange paranoia of open doorways. All doors must be shut. Things go missing in the spot where I set them down and then later reappear only after I get far, far too frustrated. I feel a weird sense of protection from both my dogs. I keep them both in the one room I usually am in for the day with me to closely monitor the sounds and make sure they are not coming from upstairs or from them messing about on their own, but I am on the basement floor. One of my dogs is severely disabled. I don't know why I feel protection radiating from her, perhaps because she has the most beautiful soul of an animal. I'm convinced paranormal activity stays outside of the room she is in. 
This is also why I know if I see something destroyed, it's kind of hard to blame a paralyzed dog about it. I do have a Ouija board that I used once, but otherwise purchased because it was in original 1963, or some sort, 1960 something, from a private seller at an auction. I purchased it three years ago. I never had any problems. I don't think it is related. I did have one incident that never followed up or became anything else. These experiences are all manifesting from early this year. I don't really believe in the paranormal. Until now. When I was little, like ages three to four, I had an imaginary friend. We lived in a double wide on a small property on Vancouver Island, Canada. It was a small little town and you had to take a ferry to get to the mainland. The property we lived on was owned by someone else who also lived on the property, but their house wasn't really near ours. I don't remember a whole lot about the property because I was so young, but this is just to give a general idea of it. We had our double wide, two greenhouses and a large garden. I remember spending a lot of time in the garden with my mom, specifically the purple lettuce and rainbow carrots we grew. My mom tells me about my imaginary friend I called the Red Man. I don't know why I called him that, as I don't remember what he looked like. When I think back to it, I remember a red silhouette of a tall man, and that's about it. My mom didn't think much of the Red Man at first, as I had an active imagination and this was just a new friend. The Red Man and I would have tea parties together, build forts and colour together, general little kids things. This went on for about a month or so, until one day my mom told me that the Red Man wasn't real. He was just my imaginary friend. Later that day while she was in the garden, she was bent down pulling out a weed and she was suddenly knocked over. She thought it was my dad as she felt hands on her back and she was shoved down. She turned around to see no one there. She ran into the house and my dad was sitting on the couch. While she was telling my dad about this, I came into the living room and told her that it wasn't him, it was the red man. He was angry with her for saying he wasn't real. I don't remember if anything else really happened, but the red man and I continued to have our tea parties like nothing happened. Fast forward a few months and we get invited to the property owner's house. Don't remember why, all I know is we were there for some reason. While we were being shown the house, I noticed a picture of a man on the wall. I stopped, pointed to him and said, Mommy, that's the red man. She asked me what I meant and I just repeated, that's the red man. A few years later, my mom tells me about how the man in the picture was the owner's brother who lived in the double wide before us. He died in a plane crash a year before we moved in. It was 2014, I was 14, I'm 21 now, and spent most of my time at the park. I was, and still am, an emo kid and was really struggling with my mental health and hated being at home, so I would spend all day and all night at the park drawing and smoking cigarettes I'd stolen from my older sister. I live in a small beach town in the Pacific Northwest, and off to the side of the park there was a trail that led to the bay, where I liked to sit and draw, or just watch the tide come in from a large rock. The park itself was a very large field, with a baseball field in the front, and then the park was towards the back, surrounded by trees. There was one street light at the end of the road. Off to one side, there was a road that led to a few houses behind the park, and there was lots of trails you could take through the wooded area that would either lead to someone's property or take you back to the park. There was a large undercover area that was split down the middle with a wall, both sides having picnic tables and a counter with a sink and bathrooms at the back of the building. There was a sort of hallway that led from the back where you couldn't see someone coming until they were in the front picnic area. This hallway ties in later. A few months before the incident, I was sitting on a swing scribbling away in a notebook with my headphones in when a man showed up. He looked homeless, his clothes and face were dirty, and he had shoulder length hair and a scruffy beard. I'd had a few encounters with weirdos at the park and I just ignored them. I always carried a pocket knife on me just in case anyone ever tried anything, but luckily never had to use it. The man sits down at a bench and just watches me for about 10 minutes or so. 
I continued to ignore him, kept my headphones in, but paused my music because I noticed he was speaking. He was sort of just mumbling to himself and I couldn't really make out the words until he stood up and walked over to me. I looked up at him and he started talking. He told me that I needed protected from the monsters in the town. The monsters here are like pretty young girls like myself and he was sent here to protect them. My first thought was, okay, so this dude is high as fuck and I should probably go. But before I could even get out of the swing, he turned around and walked away. I never saw him again and just thought he was a drug addict as there's a lot of them in my town. Now, onto the incident. This happened a couple of weeks after my encounter with the strange man. It was about three in the morning and I was sitting up on the counter in the undercover area. The only light source came from above me and the single street light on the other side of the park, so the majority of the field was dark. I did this often as I liked being alone at night and had never had any bad experiences being there that late. I looked up from my drawing and noticed what looked like a large white dog run under the street lamp. Didn't think much of it as I knew the people who lived across the streets had a large white dog. I continued looking, hoping to see the dog again. I couldn't make anything out in the dark, when suddenly I see the same thing run across the same field and up into the woods in a matter of seconds. Time seemed to slow down as I watched this creature. I realized it was not a dog, as it had no fur, and something about it almost looked human. The way its body moved just didn't look right. I couldn't make out any features because of how quickly it ran. I froze. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. I felt sick to my stomach and my mind was screaming at me to run. So I did. I grabbed my bag, shoved my sketchbook inside and ran as fast as I could, constantly checking behind me to see if the creature was following. I didn't stop running until I was on my front porch. I didn't go back to the park for some time after that and when I did go back I always left way before the sunset. My brother and I have some theories about this creature. We're not sure what the hell it was and I'd love to hear if anyone has any ideas. We were talking about this a while back and he mentioned that it might have been circling me. The spot in the woods that the creature disappeared into had a trail that came out behind the park and the back of the building was just a few steps away from the exit. He thinks it had spotted me and wanted to sneak up from behind through the little hallway area to catch me off guard. I'd never thought about that and it makes me anxious to think about. I always thought the creature didn't even see me there and was just out for a run or something. It's honestly so scary to think that if I wouldn't have run at that moment, I might not be here to post this. As for the weird man, my brother thinks that he actually was sent to protect me and that it was a warning sign that I'd missed. We're not religious, so I wouldn't say he was sent from God or anything, but it definitely is strange even if it is just a coincidence. The house I used to live in was in a rural area. It was an older house built in the 60s. There were about six acres of land on the property and it was near the end of a dirt road neighborhood. That's what I called it. Pretty much there were six houses on a relatively long dirt road. The house I lived in was second to last on the dirt road. Only two other houses in the neighborhood were occupied at the time we moved in. I was about seven at the time. I remember being really excited at first because I was dreaming about getting all these different animals. And we did eventually get cats, dogs, chickens and goats. After about a month, I decided I was finally brave enough to explore the area around the house. There was an old dilapidated chicken coop near the front of the property next to a patch of woods. My stepfather was in the process of rebuilding it. I remember trying to enter the woods near the chicken coop and it felt wrong. That's the only way I could describe it. It just felt wrong like it wasn't supposed to be there, so I left. I would only realize years later that was just the first experience. Within the first six months of living there, I begged my parents for a pair of curtains for my room. My room was facing the backyard and the greater wooded area and I constantly felt like I was being watched and I hated it. I was in near hysterics about it until they finally got me curtains and that only provided a bit of comfort. As the years went on, I knew something was wrong with that house and the area around it. I knew there were places on that land I shouldn't go and I should avoid. 
I used to have dreams looking back on it. I believe it was sleep paralysis, but as a child, I just put them off as weird, creepy dreams. I also had a night terror once, and it was probably one of the worst nights of my life, and the worst personal experience I had at that house. There were shadows everywhere, and they were yelling over each other, and I couldn't understand them. I was screaming for my parents until my voice went out and I couldn't speak anymore. No one heard me. It fucked me up for a long time. I still experienced other things. There was a crawl space behind my closet and I would hear things moving around and making noises inside of it occasionally. I tried to ignore it. And there was a constant presence in my room in the next room to mine. Sometimes it got so overwhelming, I couldn't stand to be in that room and I had to go sleep with my parents in the living room. And then there were a couple times I heard weird noises during the night when I was staying up watching TV. It sounded like coyotes, but distorted and just wrong. That's just the closest sound I can compare it to. I think I know what it was, but I won't say its name. And then there was the thing I was most terrified of. And it was why I always avoided the entrance to the attic. Because there was a thing in the attic. An awful thing. I never saw it and never heard it. Thank God I didn't. But just walking past or near the entrance to the attic would make me terrified, sick and uneasy. None of the animals would go near or past it either. After my parents divorced, my mom and I left the house and I'm glad we did. Because according to my mother's ex-husband, it got a lot worse. But that's not my experience to share. I honestly just chalked it all up to me being an anxious kid until recently, when I was talking to my mother's ex-husband, who recently moved out of that house. I've known that man my entire life, and I've never seen or heard him so terrified. Even my mother has experienced things in that house, and she doesn't believe in the paranormal. Ever since I could speak, I would always threaten to kill myself somehow. Yeah, everyone does it, but I can imagine being a mother and having your four-year-old daughter threaten to lay in the road so a car will hit her is terrifying. Anyways, that was constant until I was about six and it just stopped. Suddenly my older sister started doing the same. I grew up in a very hippie family and my mom was convinced we were possessed. My mom took my sister to a hippie doctor a couple years later and my sister stopped it and moved back to me, I suppose. I, it stayed with me from 11 to 14, keep in mind. My parents were divorced for many years and my dad lived in the mountains. His house was online, online on top of the mountain with no other houses around and was also a canyon where many people died immigrating through it, already creepy enough. After my sister got somewhat exercised and whatever it was moved back to me, I had sleep paralysis only at my dad's house. I didn't know that it was sleep paralysis at first. I thought I was just dreaming, but I did some research and found out it was pretty common. I remember I had this black Ikea dresser in the corner of my room that turned into a tall figure. I could only see it out the side of my eye every night though. I never told anyone about it until I was 13 and I was so terrified of going to my dad's house. So I went to my mom. I was honestly surprised she believed me, but then again, she was a hippie who believed in all kinds of stuff. A week after I told her, she took me out of school that day to take me to the doctors. When we got there, it wasn't actually the doctors, it was the hippie doctor. My mum was so convinced that we were possessed by something and obviously being 13, that scared the shit out of me. We got in there and I laid on a table. He told me to close my eyes and rest. He tried to communicate with my subconscious through my arm, but I felt stupid and that it was bullshit. He decided that he would communicate through my mom using my energy. I held my mom's hand as she took my spot on the table and closed her eyes. He began to ask her questions and remember her twitching and somewhat convulsing with every question, which made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. At the end of the appointments, he looks at me and tells me that my sleep paralysis is protecting me. That the thing I see out of the corner of my eye isn't a demon, but it's a part of me assuring me that I'm safe. And honestly, that made sense to me. I had a lot of weird experiences at my dad's house that terrified me. Same with all my siblings too. They've all seen things. I have two half brothers who are four and five living there all the time and I tell them ghosts don't exist and such. 
One time the younger one was talking to the wall, showing a Lego set that he had built. I asked, who's that for? And he pointed to the corner where he was standing and said, Madeline. I didn't think anything of that a couple months later. I was sitting with the older one on the couch and I was messing with him. I asked, do you have a girlfriend? He nodded his head. What's her name? I continued. He pointed to the same corner and said, Madeline. And that was very strange, but as long as they're not sketched out, I won't be either. Anyways, back to the original story. After he told me I was safe, he made me leave the room and talk to my mom for around half an hour. She refused to tell me what he told her. All she told me was it was about my past life. I decided to stop trying to get it out of her and just forget it. My mom had me drop back off at school. That night I went to a friend's house for a sleepover. She lived in the same canyon as my dad, but closer to the city than him. Her house still terrified me. We were watching a movie and I went to go take off my jewelry in a bathroom, which was three floors up from a living room. I ran up there alone and took it off and out of the corner of my eye, I saw something and I could feel it too. It was peeking in the doorway at me and it made my stomach twist up. I quickly darted my eyes to whatever it was and it disappeared and I ran so fucking fast down the stairs and started demanding who was messing with me. They all looked at me terrified asking what I was talking about and realized that I was just making shit up and forgot about it. For three years after that, I felt completely normal. I also had gotten a new room at my dad's and had no more sleep paralysis. One night I had a super weird dream though. In the dream, I was me, but in a different life. And I was constantly being followed by something telling me to hurt myself. In the dream, I ended up killing myself and I ended up in the stars. This astrological figure told me I didn't need to fear anything, that I'd be going into the next life with protection. And I was suddenly brought into the life I'm living. The dream showed events I'd lived and brought me back to the moment where I saw that thing in my friend's house. The moment stopped in slow motion and turned to the thing in the doorway and something whispered, it's trying to come back in this terrifying voice. And then I woke up. I ran to my mom and told about the dream. I also never remember dreams as vividly as I remembered this one. And she told me that my past life is exactly what the hippie doctor had told her when he kicked me out of the room. We both just stared at each other and I was confused on why my subconscious had let me access that. It's been over a year now since I had that dream, but ever since I had it, I've been having really weird encounters. I'm scared it's gonna come back. This was 2009 or 10, and I'd lived in a house for several years with my wife and two dogs. I don't know much about the previous owners, but they had lived in the house since it was built in 2005. Several times I had seen what appeared to be a dog, small, black and quick, disappear around the corner, sometimes in dim lights and sometimes during the day with the windows providing plenty of light. I told my wife and she said she had similar experiences. One evening sitting on the couch with the dogs reading, I heard the distinctive trot 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 of a dog coming down the hall from the bedrooms. Of course, the dogs were with me on the couch and when I looked towards the sound, there was nothing there. The same thing happened a few weeks later when my wife was also in the room. I heard it first and said, do you hear that? She said, what, the dog coming to see us? Then she noticed that both the dogs were again on the couch. The craziest part happened a few months after we started noticing things. We were asleep in the main bedroom with the door closed. The dog slept in the bedroom with us, the little one on the bed and the big one on the floor. We had just dozed off and we were awakened by a distinctive and disturbing sound. A dog was getting ready to throw up. As any pet owner knows, you usually get four or five dry heaves as a warning to get the dog off the carpet. We both identified the sound as coming from the hallway and I sprang into action. Finding nothing on the other side of the door, I looked for the dogs in the bedroom. As before, they were both fast asleep. We spent the next 20 minutes talking about it, then went back to sleep. That was the last we ever saw or heard of our little visitor. <laughs> 